What's up, my fellow actors out there? Today, we're going to be talking to Jessica Hood Morris from the Hood School of Acting for the second time on this channel. Uh, I think our first interview with you, Jessica, was exactly a year ago, back in 2020. For those of you who have not seen that first video, I'll put a link up somewhere up here <laughs> uh, that you can click on to watch that first video. Uh, and then after you finish watching that, you can come back here and see what the next steps are. So first of all, thank you, Jessica, for being here. Welcome. And how are you doing today? Awesome. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Those of you that don't know, Jessica was my very first acting teacher in Cleveland, Ohio. I studied with her for over eight years before moving down here to Atlanta. Um, and I, I think it's, it's great to be able to have you share about the acting technique that has basically taken me to where I am today in my acting career. Um, and I think it's awesome that right now, previously, I would say uh, the Hood School of Acting a school in Cleveland, Ohio. But now, because uh, so many of your classes are on Zoom, it's a worldwide acting school now uh, because you have students from everywhere. Yeah, I just had a meeting with uh, my assistant and we were talking about adding new classes because we have people from Sweden, Germany. So we're obviously Canada, all over the place, but we're trying to actually accommodate for different times because some people are yeah. waking up at three in the morning, setting their alarm for three in the morning and coming to our class. So, so we're actually trying to set up our earlier day classes for all those people that are in different, different time zones. Does that mean you're going to start teaching a class at three in the morning your time? No, that won't be me. <laughs> we, we do have so many classes now online. I think we have 18 classes per week, which is phenomenal. Just great. due to, yeah, so many different people in different countries attending. That's great. Hey, so for those of you that are watching, as you're watching this, if you feel like that you're interested in learning about the Meister technique or any other uh, of the acting classes that are offered at the Hood School of Acting, I'll put a link to the Hood School's face or not Facebook page website down in the description of this video. Um, and you can check out that link and check out all the classes that are offered. And if you are interested, sign up for a class. All right. So today let's talk about the next step. So the, in the first video, like we said, we talked about the first exercise in the Meisner technique, which is what everybody learns their first day, what I learned my very first day when I came into class, which was repetition. And then so Meisner developed uh, a series of exercises that builds upon that. Right. So what's the next step after repetition? So after repetition, um, as we mentioned in the first video, repetition is to keep us connected. And hopefully you'll watch that first video to see all about that. Um, we move to what we call an activity and a hover. Sorry, my cat will probably pop in. Hi, Siren. <laughs> Siren, yes. Um, so we're moving to what we call an activity and a hover. So what we're doing with the activity is it has to revolve around three things. It needs to be physically difficult. There needs to be a time constraint and a meaning. So a great example of an activity would be, let's say that Kurt just got an audition for a, a commercial in Atlanta. And this is something that he's like super amped about. Maybe it's a LeBron James commercial. Um, and he's connected with the whole LeBron thing when he was here in Cleveland. So the, you know, Kurt's thinking like, this is exciting, why not? Um, and let's say that Kurt went ahead and sent his self tape in and the client uh, loved him. So they reached out to his agent and said, you know, we absolutely loved Kurt's tape, but we want to see if Kurt can take a basketball and spin it on his finger um, for 30 seconds, because we'll need Kurt to do that in the commercial right next to LeBron. And so um, Kurt's agent calls him up and says, hey, I got kind of a weird request here. Um, we want to see if you can actually spin a basketball on your finger because this is needed in the commercial. So of course, Kurt's like, yeah, yeah, definitely. No problem. Um, hangs up and he's like, holy mackinoli, I need to now learn how to spin the basketball on my finger. Um, and I have to do that for 30 seconds. And so we've, we've now created a circumstance that makes sense with Kurt. He would obviously love to be in a LeBron James commercial. It's physically difficult. And now we have the time constraint. So let's say the agent said, this is kind of tough, but we'd like to have this tape in within a half hour. So Kurt's kind of thinking like, okay, yeah, got this. So that's pretty much what we do at this stage. We're going to create a circumstance that makes sense with your life. Um, to kind of recap, Kurt has to to balance that ball or spin the ball for 30 seconds. He has, the meaning is he doesn't want to let his agent down. He obviously would like to book the commercial and the time constraint is now he has 
probably about 20 minutes to practice this before he sets up his you know, self-tape situation and starts filming it. Um, so we've created an imaginary circumstance that can make sense in Kurt's life. And now what he'll do is he'll practice via Zoom in class and he'll actually take the basketball and, and try to practice that while playing the repetition game with his partner. So what we're trying to teach you here is many things, but one is to believe in that imaginary circumstance. So Meisner has you create a circumstance that makes sense with your life to start. You know, we're not gonna be doing circumstances where you just got in a fight with, with someone because you thought they were cheating on you. And so you ended up killing them and now you're trying to get the blood out of the shirt. You know, this is like so far-fetched, yes, we'll We'll, we'll prepare for those type of scenes later because you will probably have to do those in your career. But right now, it just has to be something that makes sense with your life. Um, and we all are actors, so we can relate to having a last minute audition that we have to prep for. Um, so this is what we'd have you do. And then we'd have your partner play the repetition game. You're spinning a ball, I'm spinning a ball. You're spinning a ball, I'm spinning a ball. You seem frustrated, I'm frustrated. And so we're teaching you to believe in the imaginary circumstance, but also train your ear now to pick up on emotional changes because we're no longer staring at our partner um, and picking up on changes. We're training our ear to be able to do that so we can do something and adjust to someone without looking at them. And that's ultimately what that third stage is, believing in that task and connecting with someone at the same time. Um, really quickly, another thing that I always talk about is ultimately every scene you do is going to move and change you. The circumstances, you'll be changed off of the circumstances, but also you're gonna be changed off of your partner. and essentially that activity is your circumstance. You're being changed off of it as you're trying to spin it and you drop it and it's like, oh, frustrating and it's moving you, but also you're being moved off of your partner. I, I a lot of times see actors really just do one or the other. They're either moved off of their circumstances, they have a strong point of view towards what's going on in the scene, but they just kind of like block their partner out or they have you know, a lot of connection with their partner, but they don't really understand what the scene's about and the scene's not changing them. So that's really why we do this exercise to teach you to be able to do both. Yeah, and I think it's such a great exercise. And um, we see a lot of beginner actors where they, you know, they can barely even walk and talk at the same time. Right? And then that's exactly what this exercise is teaching you so that you can do two things at once. I've, I've seen, actors when I help them with auditions, where in the audition, we kind of give them something that their character would be doing in the scene. And if they don't really have this type of training, what we see sometimes is they're doing it. And as soon as we start saying our lines, they stop. And it's just like, they look like actors, right? And what this, what this exercise really does is help people uh, look realistic and, and do what we do as human beings in the real world. Very rarely as human beings, are we just staring face to face with people and just talking. We're, we're always doing something. Even, you know, when you're out with friends at a restaurant, you're eating and you're having a conversation all at the same time. And we can do that. But sometimes when we're acting, you know, we, we're so in our heads and we're not able to. So this exercise is great for that. Yes, I totally agree. Yeah. Okay. So what is that next step now? We've done, we've done the first step, which is just the repetition, nothing else. Now we've added in the activity uh, and while playing the repetition game. And then after the students have been able to get good at this part, what's the next step after that? So the next stage after activity with a hover would be emotional preparation. So at this point, we are going to teach you how to prepare happiness, sadness, and anger. Um, through a separate class, we teach you how to daydream and you'll go in neutral with no emotion at all. And then you'll enter the Zoom or that classroom with one of those emotions. Um, and we call this a home alone. So what's happening at this point is we will teach you how to effectively daydream. Um, once I'll give you usually about 10 minutes in, in the class Zoom session. Once you've fully prepared, I will call you in and you are going to walk into the room from just receiving news. So the goal is to have that preparation for the first moment of the scene. Um, and what we do at the home alone is we'll give you a circumstance, let's say uh, a loved one just passed. And so you, we set up that you basically just walked up to your apartment or you, you know, just received the news and that, you know, your life, your fr best friend has been life flighted to the hospital and it looks like they're going to pass away. So this is the circumstance in, in the play. This is the circumstance in the script. And your job as an actor is to come in full because we have to be alive under these circumstances. Um, and so what you would do then is prepare in, in the breakout room 
and then you would enter with that emotion. Um, we set it up like an exercise of public solitude Meisner likes to talk about. So you are clearly in front of a classroom, but you are in your own house being able to release all this emotion of, of how you're feeling. So we want to fully express at this point. We don't want to hold back. Um, the goal is for you guys to consistently be able to prepare on a scale one to 10, a 10. I would say, I always suggest almost like a good six months of hitting a 10, happiness, sadness, and anger. So you could consistently in class. So then you could feel confident. Okay. If I I'm asked to do this on set, I'm pretty sure I can take five to 10 minutes and I'll be able to do it because I've been doing this in class for six months straight, consistently hitting that 10. And that's really what we work towards with emotional preparation. It's just really practice and being able to fully achieve that 10 each time. Yeah. And I think this is obviously everything, every exercise is important. This is one of the big ones because this is where, when we watch the actors who are you know, the Oscar winning actors, the Emmy winning actors, those performances are the ones that are so uh, deeply emotional and the ones that, you know, we connect with the most and they, and when they're able to express so truthfully on camera, uh, it's not easy. And that's what this exercise is teaching. And, and all of these exercises that we've talked about, even from the previous video, um, none of these are things that, you know, we pick up right away. It's not like, you know, you take a a couple of weeks of classes and you've learned everything, you know, all of this takes practice. It's just like, you know, sports, right? We can explain what the concepts of every sport, how to, how to shoot a free throw or anything like that, but all of it takes practice over the entire period of your careers um, to continue to improve and get better at. Correct. I agree. Okay. So now we've, uh, once an actor goes through that uh, emotional preparation, we've learned how to do it. Um, and how to get emotionally, emotionally full um, in any one of those emotions. What's the exercise that's then uh, used to um, express it? Did we, did we already talk about it? We didn't, you didn't say uh, what it was called, right? Home Alones. I, yeah. I did, but briefly. Oh, okay. That home alone, then I would send you off in a breakout room and now you'd be coming into class. You're coming home alone and allowing yourself to release that emotion. And that's, it sounds simple. I was going to say it's as simple as that, but it yeah. is not easy to one, be able to go from neutral to, to train your imagination through that daydream to believe it's happening. It takes a while. It, it's definitely, definitely doable. In fact, we just had, um, an emotional preparation class. I think it was four weeks ago and I've had eight students online um, doing the home alones and every single one of those eight, their second by their second try of sadness was able to fully release and mm -hmm. feel it, it. It definitely appeared like, okay, a loved one just passed mm -hmm. and, and the first time. I think because the camera is in our face um, online, especially the first time, a lot of my students kind of held back and they felt like, or they would do this and cover their face. And I said, mm -hmm. no, we want to see what's going on. So, you know, allow us to see that and be vulnerable. That's why we go to the theaters. That's why we go see great actors because they allow that vulnerability. Right. And so I, I said, don't cover your face. And by that next time, every single one of them was able to fully prepare that 10. Now, what I keep telling them is it's great to do it once. Um, and that's phenomenal, amazing, but we want to make sure we can do it over and over and over again, because when we get to set that pressure of being on set is, you know, is, is extreme. So we want to make sure we're able to do that in class a lot before we're comfortable and confident going to set. Um, 100%. So, yes. Yeah. And I, you know, you mentioned something that I never thought about before, and I think it's really interesting in that there's that added benefit now of doing the classes on Zoom because it is on camera, whereas the in-person classes, when at least when I was taking class, we never really used a camera for the exercises. But now having that camera element, it gets the actors used to having the cameras on them. And I think that's a, that's a big deal. And something I talk about a lot with why I absolutely love teaching and being a part of online Meisner is because the, the acting world now has gone virtual. And I've talked to several casting directors that said, even, you know, in a year or two from now, they want to stick with virtual auditions. They just, it's easier for them. They like it. So being able to learn to be present in, in the virtual world is so very important now. And that's what Miser is all about is being present and picking up on moments in, in, you know, on the virtual world. And that's what we're doing in this class. And I just think it's phenomenal to be able to do that because 
let's face it in person, it's a little bit easier to be able to feel someone's energy. So, and we're not doing that in in the auditions anymore. So we have to be that much more on top of every moment and really pay attention. And that's what this class is all about. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Okay. I think uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this, this next step of the exercise coming up and then we'll probably end it there and we'll have us another video later down the line to uh to continue on this conversation so now that we've now that an actor has done emotional preparation they've done a home alone what's uh what's the next step after that awesome so the next step is what we call an activity with emotional preparation and a door with emotional preparation so um what we'll be doing at this point so we already talked about the activity like kurt had the audition with for lebron james commercial and he's spinning the basketball right So now we're just raising the bar, basically. We are coming home from just receiving news. So we're gonna basically essentially come home, do a home alone. We're angry about something, let's say. Um, Let's say, um, I'm coming up with a circumstance on the spot. Let's say that um, Kurt and his best friend, Eric, back in the day decided, okay, you know what? We never do mega millions, but there's something about this. It reminded us of like, you know, high school. And so they both went in on a mega millions. And let's say that um, they they took, took a screenshot of like half of the tickets. So they got their numbers and they actually won. Let's say they won, um, we won't go like crazy, but let's say they won like 900,000. And Kurt was the one that was holding the tickets. Well, Kurt's kind of like, these things are stupid. I'm, I'm, you know, whatever. And he put it somewhere and forgot about it. And Eric called him up. and was like, holy crap. Did you see we won this? Um, and Kurt, the first thing Kurt thinks, oh, I don't know what I did with that ticket. So what would the emotion be? We could, we could take two there. I, I, for me, I would probably be angry with myself because I'd be like, what, you, what an idiot. Why would you not keep that ticket somewhere? Someone else might just be ecstatic. Like we just won 800,000, right? So that's our before moment. Just getting off the phone with Eric realizing that we literally have $800,000. Now I just got to find the ticket. Walking in in the um, Zoom room, ecstatic, super happy. Now the next step is our activity. We have to find this ticket. Otherwise we don't have the 800,000. And let's say that we have to, you know, get get the ticket in by by today. Um, So we have to look through our house to find it. Now through the doing of finding this, this ticket, our emotion is going to change because if we can't find it, we're going to start to get stressed, then anger at ourselves, maybe defeated, maybe sad. That's the goal here is to be changed off of the task. So what I did is I created a circumstance that is much higher than, okay, I would love to be in a LeBron James commercial making, you know, a thousand dollars. Well, this is me losing an opportunity for my friend making 400,000 or winning 400,000 and myself, you know, losing $400,000 because I misplaced a ticket. So we've raised the bar. And what we're doing is we're bringing you the first moment of like, either it's your choice as an actor. Do you want to be angry or sad or, or happy? I honestly, I think the happiness and the anger works for me. My point of view would probably be anger. Someone else might be happy. Um, but we have that first moment. And then through the doing of finding this, this ticket, our emotion changes. And now what happens is we have someone come to our door um, they need what, what a door is, I'll backtrack there. So a door is they need to come and get something from their partner. They can only get it right now. And then they emotionally work off. So that door, that reason justifies their knock. And then they emotionally work off their partner. So at that point, we are now being changed off of the task, trying to find this ticket. And then we have someone else that's at our house emotional, and we need to work off of them emotionally. And that's what a door and activity is with emotional preparation. And so when those two actors that are on stage doing this exercise, you have the one who has prepared emotionally for that activity uh, that you just described with the lottery ticket. And then the person coming to the door has also emotionally prepared, right? And they have a separate circumstance that are, it's different from the person, uh, the lottery ticket. Correct. So the door could simply be, um, uh, it could be that for, for me, I pick up my daughter from school in 10 minutes, uh, uh, 20 minutes, right? So let's say that I had people coming over doing landscape and uh, they blocked my driveway and I'm walking around and I cannot find them anywhere at all. And I, I've got to go pick up my daughter. Otherwise she's going to be stuck at school. So that would be very stressful to me. So my door could be going to my neighbors, obviously angry that the 
landscapers, where the heck are they? Who the heck just blocks my driveway and is not, you know, not anywhere to be found. And so I'm, I'm frustrated, but I'm going to my neighbors hoping that they'll let me borrow their car. That could be a door because I need it right now. I can only get it from my neighbor. I can't get out. I don't have time to Uber. Not that I could anyways, I would need a car seat <laughs> um, to do that. So, so, you know, that would be a, a door is that I need to get a car to be able to get to my daughter's school. Now that, that is something that moves me. My daughter is everything to me. She's going to be seven soon. And she, you know, is my life, but an actor, it could be that you, um, you know, your neighbor blocked your car in and you have a huge audition that you're going to, and you need to borrow, you need to borrow uh, someone's car because otherwise you're going to miss out on a big opportunity. So that could be your door. And then we, that justifies our knock. We work off each other emotionally. And that's really all we're doing there with the door and activity. Yeah, and I think the first time people see these types of exercises in class, they may look a little confusing. Same thing with uh, repetition and everything. Right? The first time we see them, we're, it's kind of confusing. But uh, at least for me, when I, when I started to really understand what they were for and then be able to connect it with like movies that I watch and, and TV shows that I watch. And when you see the scenes, like the powerful scenes with conflict between two characters, it's exactly what these exercises are, except that in these exercises, we're making up these random, what seem like random situations, but the emotion of them are exactly the same as what you would see in, in these uh, scenes and movies and shows. I totally agree that what we're trying to do at this point is to teach you to believe in really uh, emotionally full circumstances because eventually the scenes will be that. So we want you to create your own first. Once I see that you can fully commit and believe in these imaginary circumstances that are really you know, emotional, then we move into scene work. Uh, we first move into relationships and then scene work, which I know we're gonna talk about you know, the next time we meet. But yeah, these, these doors and activities are so important because it's just teaching you to believe in those deep emotional you know, imaginary circumstances. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I think this was a, a great explanation of these next uh, steps of the Meisner uh, technique. Those of you who are interested in checking this out, definitely uh, click on that website for the Hood School of Acting and check out the classes there. Jessica, I don't know if you want to talk about a little bit more about uh, your other classes that are offered there as well, uh, in addition to the Meisner ones. Okay, of course. Um, we, we recently started doing uh, something pretty exciting, um, sort of packages. I want to say it's kind of like unlimited, but we offer so many um, classes. So we have separate packages. It's up to five classes per week for $200 a month, which is really awesome. So that is what 25 uh, classes per month that you guys are able to come to if you'd like. Um, so, so basically one of the classes is obviously Meisner and it's uh, set up like this where you're seeing the two people work together. We kind of all turn our faces off. So you're just seeing two people connect. The other class that we offer, which is uh, Kurt's friend and my friend as well, took classes with us uh, with Kurt and it's a script analysis slash self tape class. So what we're doing here is um, Kellen will uh, go over the first class, the, the script, and you guys will do a script analysis. He'll break down everything in that script. And at the end of the class, he'll talk about, okay, so next week I want you to actually do a self-tape on this actual script. So you'll do a self-tape and at the beginning of the class, he'll go through everyone's self-tapes and talk about them. Um, you know, what worked, what didn't, he'll do beat by beat. And then the next part of the same day, the same class, he'll go over the script for the following week. You guys will do a self-tape. The beginning of the class, you'll go over the self-tapes, then you'll do the script analysis. And that's, um, that's weekly. So it's kind of like a two-part class. And then we do now improv online, which is tons of fun. Um, it's just teaching you once again to be present in the moment. Um, and then we do Friday nights working actor class. So we have Keith Brooks, who's Kurt introduced me to. He's phenomenal. He's so awesome. He'll do lectures. Um, sometimes he'll get you guys working. We have James Matteo, who worked with um, Steven Spielberg several, several times. He's Mark Wahlberg. I mean, he's, he's a working actor. Um, so this is basically a working actors class. Kurt will come on and teach whenever he's not busy. And so this is kind of lectures about teaching you different things with the business and, and um, sometimes getting you up there and working as well. So those are the classes that we offer online. Yeah, they're, they're fantastic. I definitely recommend everybody at least go, you know, go to the website and check it out and see what works best for you. All right. And one more thing I wanted to mention, guys, is that uh, those of you that have been following my channel for a while, you may have seen that we did a workshop with Jessica uh, a couple of months ago, I think back in February, 
where she explained all of the Meisner technique and had students demonstrate each of the exercises and then did Q and A afterwards. And that was extremely valuable. A lot of people loved the workshop. A lot of people signed up for classes after the workshop too, right? So uh, we will be doing another one of those coming up soon. If you're watching this, you know, relatively soon uh, by the time we're posting this video. Otherwise in the future, I'm sure we'll be continuously doing that workshop every once in a while throughout the year. Um, so check out the actingcareercenter.com website in the workshops page and to see if we have a workshop coming up. All right. So uh, this is great, Jessica. Thanks again for coming on here and explaining more about the Meisner technique. Technique, Like I said, we're going to be doing a follow-up video again uh, to do part three and possibly part four uh, after that. Um, so thank you, Jessica, and we'll see you soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Kurt.